and uh, they uh, completely computed this for a variety of x. However, they had no way of accessing this cohomology of this evil complex. This was led by Don Davis, who he uh, wrote a computer program to compute the cohomology of the evil complex in the K sphere for the BO based atom spectral sequence. However, as I mentioned, um, this, these, you know, the, the F2 vector spaces involved are very random and mysterious. Uh, Gunnar Carlson wrote an extensive uh, study of, of, of what these were just in the case of BO smash BO. And Don Davis wrote a computer program that computed the cohomology of this complex. But the problem is, is that this complex, uh, uh, this evil complex, um, its, its dimension grows exponentially in size. And it's not like it has any kind of good cohomological description. Like there's no alternate way to compute this cohomology besides just saying, hey, it's the cohomology of this, this weird. And so, so his computer program only got up to about dimension 20. So it was like T less than 25 or something was where his computer program went up to and then just petered out. So we want to have a way of accessing this evil complex. Uh, uh, so, so what we want, so our project, is that we want a better way of getting the cohomology of the evil complex and then, and then subsequently determining the E2 term. Okay, um, so uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at my notes here. Oh, right. Okay, so in order to explain our technique, I'm going to do an extended explicit example. And that's going to probably take most of my talk. And then I'll say a few things about the, some other, you know, then, then once I tell you the technique, you, you can then apply this to a variety of settings. So let me just say that settings, settings for which this technique applies, that is, you know, settings for which you have um, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, decomposition of, where do I have that? Oh, this kind of de decomposition. Uh, Say when X is the sphere, or sometimes X can be other things too, but I'm not going to be very explicit about this. Um, some various E's for which this technique works is HZ, BU, BO, uh, BP brackets 2. Um, so let me put some names here. So it's easy to see that HZ satisfies the hypotheses above. BU, as I mentioned, Adams has this study in the book. Mohawald Milgram studied BO. BB brackets two, very recently, my student Dominic Culver, this was his thesis, showed that BB brackets two, star BB brackets two, has this, has this decomposition that I described. So our techniques are applicable. We think it'll also be the case that TMF is going to have this decomposition, but we're not there yet. Uh, the TMF smash TMF was studied uh, by myself and co-authors Kyle Ormsby, uh, Nat Stapleton, and uh, Stoanaska, uh, but we, we didn't really uh, study this evil part. We, we, our, our study was focused on the good part. Um, and, uh, and some of Dominic's techniques seem to suggest that, that in fact, BP brackets N, you might you expect that it, that it even generally has this kind of behavior, though, uh, though, though further study is needed. Okay, so I do this extended example to demonstrate the technique. So this extended example, I'm gonna choose E to be BO. And I'm going to choose X to be Y. Now here, Y is a specific complex. It's, uh, it's also known as the mod 2 Mohr spectrum smash the cofiber of eta, or some people call it RP2 smash CP2. The only really thing that I need to know about Y is that it has the following property. BO smash Y is 
connective Morava K1. Okay, so so that co BO smash cofiber A is BU, and then smash the mod two more spectrum gives you connective, you know, mod two mod two uh, connective real K3. Oh, I should have mentioned P is like always two in this talk. So, um, yeah, I mean, what I'm actually the techniques I'm describing work in odd primaries on um, primes too, but just for simplicity, I'm going to focus my attention on the prime two. Okay, so how's this work? Well, um, so then, uh, then if I take BO smash with itself S plus one times smash Y, then that's the same thing as connective Morava K1 smashed with BO smash with itself S times. And I want to know, and it's the it's the homotopy groups of this that um, that is the E1 term. So I of the of the of the BO based atom spectral sequence for for Y, and I need to compute those homotopy groups. So what we're going to use is we're going to use an atom spectral sequence. So the classical atom spectral sequence. The classical atom spectral sequence, I'll just write ASS for classical atom spectral sequence. The uh, E2 term of the classical atom spectral sequence for K1 smash BO smash with itself S times um, via a chain ring theorem is going to look like X over an exterior algebra on Q1 on A mod mod A1 dual tensored with itself S times. And uh, so, so just, just keeping track of things, uh, what's going on here. Yeah, so this spectral sequence is converging to the E1 term or the BO-based atom spectral sequence for Y. Okay, um, now, now how does uh, Q1 act on this thing? So, uh, so, so let's, if we take A mod mod A1, it's F2 adjoins zeta 1, uh, Zeta one uh, uh, to the to the four, zeta two squared, zeta three, etc. And then um, and then I have to record how Q one acts on this. So here's zeta i is the conjugate of the C i. A Q one is a derivation, and Q one acts. So it's easy to use the use the coproduct on. Uh, Use the, the coproduct on the CIs to deduce that Q1 on CI is uh, CI plus 2 to the fourth. And so the convenient way to compute um, uh, these kind of X groups is to use Margolis homology. So let me remind you what that is. So Q1 is the derivation and Q1 squared equals 0. And um, in general, the uh, Margolis homology of a module, say that M is, is, a, is a module over, uh, say that M is a module or an exterior on QI, then the Margolis homology of M uh, with respect to QI is simply the kernel of QI mod the image of QI. So uh, in this case, it's pretty easy to compute um, what happens here. Well, uh, 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 in the Margolis homology, zeta 3 is killing zeta 1 to the 4th, and then zeta 4 is killing zeta 2 to the 4th, etc. And what you're left with is a big extra algebra on the remaining squares. So the homo Margolis homology of A mod mod A1 dual with respect to Q1 is a big exterior algebra on zeta 2 squared, zeta 3 squared, etc. And so then that tells me that um, axed uh, EQ1, uh, so what is the Margolis homology actually telling me? Well, um, you know, the, the in general, M is going to break up as like a direct sum of some free things and some not free things. So it will be like some X sum of various suspensions of exterior algebra and QI, and then plus some direct sum of F2s. 
or QIX trivially. And uh, these guys don't contribute to Margolis homology, and these guys do. So basically, Margolis homology is a, is, a, is a technique to keep track of these guys. So uh, what's X of this guy going to look like? Uh, well, it's going to look like uh, F2 join E1 uh, on this whole exterior algebra. And then going to get another contribution. Uh, so this is like the good part. And then the evil part is like the contribution from, from the three guys. Uh, so plus some, uh, something that I'll call the precisely V1 of V1 uh, uh, of, uh, of Y. And this thing uh, is concentrated in atoms filtration zero. Okay, um, more generally then, um, you're just tensoring this answer a bunch of times. And so what you find is that the E1 term of of the, of the BO atom spectral sequence for Y looks like F2 adjoined V1 tensored with uh, the Cobar complex for exterior algebra on zeta 2 squared, zeta 3 squared, etc. And you uh, have this. Island Brain McLean, this is F2 sum end. Okay, so this is our good complex. Okay, furthermore, um, the cohomology of the good complex can be accessed by means of something we call a weight spec equals. This is also terminology used by Lelman and Mohowald. It's really a kind of May spectral sequence. So there's, a, there's something like a May spectral sequence that ends up computing the cohomology of this good complex. And uh, the E2 term looks like F2 adjoined V1 tensored with X of this big exterior algebra, which is itself a big old polynomial algebra. So I will use conventional naming techniques, H21, H31, H41, etc., to denote the polynomial generators corresponding to the various exterior generators. Now, um, it turns out that you can compute the, the differentials in this May spectral sequence uh, by means of, or, or more generally, uh, the D1 or the, the, the differential in the good complex uh, by means of the following trick. So you take you know, with itself a bunch of times. And you can map that to be you smashed with itself a bunch of times. And then here you, and BU is complex orientable, so you got BP smashed with itself a bunch of times going here. And here um, you've got all the BP formulas, so the BP uh, Cobar formulas. The, BB co the BP Cobar formulas are then going to map over to give me uh, formulas for the good part over here, and then those are going to lift to tell me formulas about the good part over here. So that's a very easy way to compute this D differential. For people who are familiar with the, uh, the Ravenel's computation of the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer algebras, you might recognize this thing as looking like the E the E2 term of the May spectral sequence computing the cohomology of the uh, Morava stabilizer algebra S1, with the exception that V1 is not inverted. In any event, if you're familiar with Ravenel's computations, then you'll also know that he derives using BP formulas the differential on HI1, and it ends up being V1 h i minus one one square. And those are the only differentials in the May spectral sequence I claim. 
Okay, so then we have this very, we can easily compute the cohomology of the good complex because we know the differential. And what you find is, well, if V1 were invertible, then you would just get an exterior algebra if, because, because H31 is like killing V1 times H21 squared, H41 is killing V1 times 31 squared, et cetera. So you just, you would just end up with an exterior algebra on one generator, which would be H21. And with V1 not inverted, you do get a sum end that looks like that. But, um, but something different happens. So I'm just writing an additive, writing an additive basis for the cohomology of the good complex. Um, namely, um, this differential, for instance, um, the differential D of H31 is killing V1 H21 squared. So H21 is there, just V1 times it is zero. So you also actually get V1 torsion in this answer. So maybe I misspoke slightly. Uh, no, I didn't misspeak. This is exactly what I want. Everything's good. Okay. Remember, um, let me highlight some. I want to sort of emphasize something that maybe I didn't emphasize well enough. Um, so um, let's remember that, um, that, this, that the good complex itself has no V1 torsion, but the cohomology of the good complex can have V1, have V1 torsion, or V in general, Vn torsion. So this is all fine. It's okay. And let me tell you exactly what the V1 torsion looks like. So the V1 torsion ends up looking like, well, a basis for it is uh, given by this, H21 to the K2, H31 to the K3, all the way up through HL1 to the KL, with the requirement that KL is bigger than or equal to 2. And there's no V1 multiples on those guys. Okay, so there I did it. I just computed the cohomology of a good complex. It was not hard. I did it in roughly real time um, with, a, you know, with some bookkeeping that I didn't tell you about. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so, so that was cool. So how about the cohomology of this evil complex? So now I'm going to go back to the general discussion. So, so now I have, you know, now I have this, uh, this, 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 uh, ring spectrum E, this spectrum X, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And, uh, and I want to know, how do I compute the cohomology of the evil complex? Well, um, the trick is, um, so you can apply x. So this is a trick often used by Mohowald and many other people. Um, you can apply x to east atoms resolution. And this rise to an algebraic E resolution. And what does that look like? So I'll write that as E1 E alg uh, X. Oops, too many. Yeah. X A star. Uh, of E uh, smashed with itself S plus one times smash S. So here I'm doing this shorthand where I'm writing X uh, of X or X uh, A star homology or uh, F2 homology of X. Where x, where, where homology is, is uh, uh, mod two homology, and this thing converges to x of x. Okay, 
So you do the exact same story. So you still have this good, evil story, everything. In fact, shoot, I've been using spectral sequences this whole talk so far to compute the good and evil parts. So this is not even weird. And what I end up with is I end up with a, a description of the E2 term of the algebraic E resolution for X. Uh, it's in a long, long exact sequence where now I have the cohomology of some algebraic evil complex and the cohomology of some algebraic good complex. But here, observation. The good complex was in atoms, no atoms filtration zero. And so the good, the topological good complex and the algebraic good complex are actually the same. They're equal to each other. So in fact, this is the cohomology of the evil complex that we so desperately want. So here's the strategy. Step one, use your favorite computer program, such as Bob Bruner's X software, to compute. To compute X of X. Then, um, so I mentioned you can compute the cohomology of the uh, of the good complex totally it, typically and that the same is true of the algebraic one in fact it's even easier so compute this completely i missed a word compute compute the good complex completely okay so now i've got this spectral sequence converging to something i know this and I know this, and so I should be able to deduce this. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, so let's do an ex let's go back to our example. And let me explain how this actually plays out. So, say, e, so back to our example, E is BO and X is this complex Y. And, um, um, and now let me just tell you that um, the May spectral sequence where the algebraic complex is same, that now there was this differential. Where is that differential? There is that differential. So this element had atom filtration one, and this element has atom filtration three. So in the atom in the algebraic spectral sequence, this differential wouldn't happen because in the algebraic spectral sequence, the atom's filtration only changes by one, not by two. So it would be like an atom D2. So the May spectral sequence collapses and the cohomology of Sal is simply F2 adjoined V1, tensor with an exterior algebra on H21, H31. H41, etc. In some ways, uh, this computation uh, should remind you. Uh, well, let me, I think I'm jumping the gun here. Let me just, uh, let me say that comment a little later. Um, right. Okay, so now, um, now let me do, let me work through, let me work through this here. So I'm going to enact the strategy. So. Okay, so here I used a, a Bob Bruner program to compute x uh, over a star of y, and it looks like this. 
and I've drawn in V1 multiples because those are going to be important, okay? Now, um, now, now let me just clue you in to something here, which is that um, now I'm going to kind of draw over this. I'm going to, so let me, just, let me just mention this over here. Unfortunately, let me just, well, I'll just say, write it over here. So a key strategy. You see, the, uh, the E1 term, the E1 term basically consists of good and evil. And then um, you know, of, the, of the based algebraic spectral sequence converging to axed a star of y. And so, um, so what I really need to do to enact this strategy um, is I really need to know um, which elements in x over a star are detected by good and which ones are detected by evil. To address this, I'm going to use something that uh, uh, we call the dichotomy principle. Which to say correctly will take too much time. I'll put a slogan that's slightly incorrect, which is, is that you're evil if and only if you're V, you're detected by evil if and only if you're V, you know, in this case, V1 torsion. In the general case, it'd be Vn torsion. Okay. Um, so, um, so that's why I drew these lines so we can differentiate between the, um, uh, well, see, okay, already I kind of messed up what I was saying. Um, the implication goes this way. If you, if you are, well, okay, yeah, let me just, let me just say, I'll just put a little line between this to indicate that the notion of being V1 tor versus V1 periodic is related to the question of whether you're detected by good or evil. And Hi, Mark, Mark yes. this is Dan Isaacson. I, I don't think we can quite see the very bottom of your screen. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's terrible. Can you see it now? Yeah, now we can. Yeah. Oh, okay. It gets cut off a little bit then. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, the basic, the basic, okay, let me just do this, okay? Okay, so um, so remember that the cohomology of the good complex is F two adjoin V one. Oh no no no! Okay, everything I said is I, I just confused myself even more. This is more or less right. Okay, let me just let me just uh, let me just go on. Okay, the cohomology of the good complex that I said is this polynomial algebra. I guess this is sort of a, uh, uh, I'm demonstrating uh, something in this. So I decided for this, 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 uh, this particular seminar format, it would be cool to try to do certain computations in real time. And the problem is, is that as you sort of encounter confusions, like as, as I'm encountering confusions, I'm then subjecting you to uh, So I apologize for that. But hopefully this is, this is demonstrating the technique. Okay. We have x over a, and now I write down, I need to locate the good complex in here. So this dot over here, it's V1 periodic. This is H, ooh, I do not actually, um, I kind of don't want to cover up that blackness. So I'm just going to label it. This dot over here is A21, okay? Ooh, and I just erased one of my V, I erased one of my lines. Remember, there was supposed to be a line going through all these guys. Okay, there we go. So, so H21, there's H21, okay. Um, but um, notice that H21 squared is not here. It was supposed to be over here. So I'm gonna draw it, but it's not there. Okay, there's H21 squared. And then um, H21 cubed is there. Okay, and, um, and then I, and then here's H21 to the fourth. 
And then um, in this range, so H21 uh, lives in dimension 5, H31 lives in dimension 13, and I'm not going to be H41 in this range. So where is H31? Um, H31 is also not there. So 15 should have been here, but it's not there. So let me draw it. H31. And, um, and now let me try, try and mystify this a little bit. Um, so H21 squared wasn't there, but V1 H21 squared is there. H31 is not there, but um, I, I, V1 H31 is not there either, but V1 squared H31 is there. Oops. So I'm going to draw that. And let me mention something right off the bat here. Um, let me write it somewhere. Um, you know, um, so I'll just mention that the cohomology of the, the, the V1 inverted cohomology of C, this is the same thing as V1 inverted X. Uh, why is that? Because when you invert V1, it kills all the evil stuff. And so, and this is quite easily computed to be F2 adjoined V1 plus or minus tensored with this polynomial algebra on these classes. So, you know, you, you can also read off computations of V1 periodic X. And in this way, this looks very similar to uh, work of Hainsler and, and other folks on these V1 periodic X groups. Okay, in any event, um, in any event, uh, this is what I have. And so, so this, is, this is what I mean by the good is like V1 periodic and the evil is like V1 torsion. But the problem is, is that there were some of these elements in the cohomology of the good complex that simply aren't present in X. But let's remember that there's a boundary homomorphism that's connecting the, uh, you, have, you have the E2 term of the algebraic guy um, involves the cohomology of the good complex, and then there's a boundary homomorphism that goes to the cohomology of the evil complex. So in fact, what this means is, is that if this, class, this H21 squared is not there, then it had to kill some evil guy. So there has to be some uh, evil guy over here where the boundary, boundary of H21 squared had to hit that evil guy. Or over here, I had to have um, H31 has to hit an evil guy. and uh, and H uh, and H uh, uh, and then V one H one has to hit an evil guy. And now I can also then locate all the evil classes, namely they're just all the other classes that aren't good. So uh, so then I'm also going to circle some other classes. So these are all, this is all in the cohomology of the evil complex. I'm going to stop the computation over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, erase all this stuff. Uh, all right. So I can draw a chart beneath this. I'm going to draw for you the E2 term. Now I'm going to draw the topological short exact sequence. I'm going to draw the E2 term of the topological thing of the E base uh, of the of the BO base atom spectral sequence for Y um, out of the cohomology of C and uh, uh, Hold on here, let me make sure that I didn't lose any other. Oh no, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, great. Um, right. So now the cohomology of the topological good complex and the cohomology of the evil complex. Okay, so um remember the only the only thing I have to worry about in the co in in the in the in the topological case is that there's a differential d of 3, 1 equals V1. 
H21 squared in this range. So that would be like this. Uh, where is that? That would that would be like a uh, that would be like a uh, uh, a a kind of a differential like that. Okay, so now I'm going to draw all the evil classes, and I'm going to draw all the good classes. So here they are. So here's here's an evil class, and uh, here's a, let's hope I don't mess this up by doing this in real time. Okay, so I'm drawing all the evil classes and just reading them off in the above chart. It's that easy. It feels like a cooking show or something. Okay. There's the cohomology of evil. Okay. And Mark, now I have you to put in class in, in nine two. Where did I miss my class? Nine, nine, two. Nine, two. Nine, two. Isn't that this one? Oh, I sure did. Thank you. There. Okay, great. And now let me just add in the good classes. So here's some good stuff. Uh, let's see here. So this is supporting a whole V1 tower. And then H21 supporting a whole a whole V1 tower. Mark, this is Dan. Can you scroll up just a little bit? Oh, sure. There, um, perfect. You you? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So um, and then uh, let's see here. Then I then I have okay. I do uh, I I have H21 squared. Remember remember H21 squared was in the cohomology of the good complex. It's just uh, V1 H21 squared isn't there. Mark, this is Prasid. Uh, yeah. Isn't V1 tower going to be horizontal? No, this is, I'm drawing, oh, thank you. It's just great when your collaborators are paying attention. Because this is supposed to be a picture of the E2 term of the BO based atom spectral sequence for Y. Okay. And uh, that's so uh, V1 has, 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 has BO filtration zero. Okay, um, I should mention Y has a V1 map. Uh, that's one of the reasons why people love Y. Okay, um, right, and uh, so that's H21, H21 squared, and then, you know, here's H21 cubed is, uh, is over uh, over here, and again, uh, v1 h21 cubed is zero. So you just dot, and then um, and then h31 isn't there, um, or ne neither is its v1 tower. So I think I have everything here, and uh, then um, there is this pesky boundary homomorphism over here, but that boundary homomorphism can be created from the above picture. So basically the only action there is that this guy kills this guy. So once you eliminate those two classes, uh, once you eliminate those two classes, then what remains is a computation of the E2 term. And it turns out that through this range, then the spectral sequence collapses. Okay. Excuse um, me, excuse me, Mark. Yeah? This, this is Doug Ravenel. Uh, why, does, why isn't there a V1 tower on H21 cubed? Because, um, because in the cohomology of the topological good complex, uh, there was this May differential, D of H31 is V H21 squared. Yes. And so it just left H21 squared, but, it, but V1, the whole V1 power got killed by H31. No, I'm asking about H21 cubed. H21 cubed? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so there's also... So, so if you take D of H31, H21, then that will be V1, H21 cubed. Okay. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> You're welcome. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, um, hopefully this makes sense to folks. All right, um, let's see here. I think I don't have so much time. Sure, so let I me have, just... Mark, this is Dan. Yeah. I have a question yeah. now. 
the the evil part these are like you know i remember mclean's some ends right which is yeah so there's no um hidden extensions here Oh, there can be. There, there, yeah, there's, 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 there's plenty of. In fact, in fact, um, you know, let me just toss some things. So, so uh, new is detected by evil. Um, that's not hidden. That's just a regular. This is just these are just regular multiplication. Okay. Um, but this is a hidden extension right here. Um, the fact that 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 eta has bo filtration zero. So this is a hidden eta extension over here in the bo based atom spectral sequence. And there's actually going to be like a v1 extension going from here to here, for instance. Um, there are plenty of hidden extensions. I just haven't drawn them. Does that sound good? OK. All right. Um, OK, let me back to. Um, let me, okay, so now I'm going to enter into extreme survey mode here. Um, so, um, so let me, uh, let me see here. So, um, let me go back. Okay, let me get to the end of my little notes here. Okay, so now let me enter into survey mode. Okay, so let me say that this process of, of this, so let me first say that this process of identifying good and evil classes, like which classes in X are good and classes in X are evil, uh, is uh, these, which classes are good and which classes are evil um, can be automated uh, by means of a spectral sequence. Uh, and so we have a, we have a variant of the, um, of the algebraic, a variant of the algebraic E resolution. It starts the cohomology of the evil complex and the cohomology of the good complex. But what it does, see, one problem trying to figure out whether you're good or evil is you could be a sum of good and evil. And so to sort that out, have a variant of the algebraic E resolution, which puts the good and evil things in different de by degrees or tri degrees or however many things are on this spectral sequence. And uh, so this spectral sequence literally starts with the cohomology of the evil complex and the cohomology of the good complex and combines them to get to, so it's like in the algebraic case, there's both an algebraic and a topological version, um, and it will compute um, x of, you know, whatever complex you want. And uh, we call this the Agatha Cocological Spectral Sequence. Which was the only word in the English language fine that meant combining good and evil. Um, a second thing is we employed the spectral sequence to compute the uh, the BO based atom spectral sequence for the sphere uh, through uh, roughly t minus s less than you know just a little over forty. Um, so for reference, Elman and Mohowald using the Davis computations um, got this spectral sequence up through 20, up through around dimension 20. And uh, we, could have, we could have actually done this spectral sequence. Let me show you guys some pictures as I go through this stuff. So we could have done this spectral sequence much farther. Here's a picture of the Agatha Cockalow spectral sequence. Uh, for, uh, for computing x to the Steenrod algebra. We could have run this uh, farther, but, but as you can see, it starts to get messy. And, uh, and, and it, it, really, it, it really turns out that x of the Steenrod algebra dominates the picture, and it's not really much of an improvement in the long run over the classical atom spectral sequence. So we didn't pursue this really any further. OK. Um, then more recently, 
So we also um, computed the TMF-based uh, atom special sequence for Z, where Z is a complex of Bhattacharya and Egger. And they showed that Z has a V2 self map, a V to the 1 self map. And uh, let me just show you a picture of, oh, so let me go back to BO case. Let me show you a picture of the resulting BO atom spectral sequence chart. Okay, this is a picture of the BO atom spectral sequence for the sphere to around dimension 40. Um, not sure why I'm showing it to you, except for the fact that we're very happy that you can get this information. Um, but um, by comparison, um, so here's a picture of the Agatha Cocological spectral sequence for the TMF resolution for Z. Okay, so this is a little hard to read. It's, um, let's see if I can. So, um, so all that, all the, the real takeaway here is, um, is just, I don't know, we can compute it, I guess. <laughs> These are V2 moles sort of identifying good classes within this, and then we can get the evil classes, which are circled. So we're basically just doing that same technique. It's just, you just do it. And, um, and let me show you a picture of the resulting TMF atom spec sequence Z. Oh, sorry, this is something else. This is from Phil's thesis. I don't have a picture of that, or I do. It's here. So here's a picture of the TMF atom spectral sequence for Z. Um, again, you know, there's not too much to take away from this, except for the fact that we can compute it, so, you know, through ranges. And this was not very hard. It gets harder as you go out. Um, anyway, there is an actual application to this. Um, so, um, uh, Phil Egger, uh, and, and uh, I think part of this is joint with Prasit Bhattacharya, uh, have computed uh, the, uh, the K2 localization of Z. Well, they compute the E2 term of a spectral sequence converging to the, K, the homotopy groups of the K2 localization of Z. And that spectral sequence looks like this. But there are some possible differentials in this spectral sequence. Okay, and um, this differential doesn't happen because, uh, uh, well, there, you, can, you can include the bottom cell in the, and that shows this a permanent cycle. But this class, whose name is H32 in the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer, um, it might support a differential. But remember from my discussion of why that the cohomology of the good complex maps to the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer algebra. So you can identify classes in the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer algebra with elements in the cohomology of the good complex. And so using the TMF resolution for Z, we can actually show that this differential does not occur. The reason is, is that if you look at the, the Agatha, let's take a look at, say, for instance, the, uh, uh, the TMF resolution for Z. Here it is. Okay, we need to find the class called H. Oh, I didn't draw this one far enough. Sorry. Let me go. Let me show you the Agatha Cockological spectral sequence, the algebraic one. So H32 corresponds to this class over here. However, it's not there. It, it's, uh, um, but then uh, V2 to some power of H32 in dimension 45 is there. And it cannot or a, a potential because atoms D2s would have to hit something over here, and there's nothing there. So that tells you that H32 is, in fact, a permanent nickel, and there there's no differentials in that spectral sequence I showed you. I'm going to stop my talk here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mark. Yes, Doug. Um, could you spell that word? Uh, ah, yes. Yeah. Ag the ka k 
psychological. So, so agathos, I'm led to understand, is like Greek for good, and kakos is evil, and this is like consisting of both. Mm -hmm. Great word. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, this is Kyle Orsi. Um, hey, Kyle. Hey, I have a question about why. Um, yes. So this is a really cool example, and I, I was wondering if there was a motivation for, for running this example, or is why simply uh, the, the right name? Okay. okay, I, okay, so two things to say about that. One thing is, um, is that I chose it because it is, it turns out that these, you know, just like Z for TMF and Y for um, Y for BO, the X groups involve just computing X over an exterior algebra on one generator. So they're super easy to run. So this is the cleanest, this is the cleanest example that I could come up with and do in real time. And uh, I should mention that um, from basically what I told you, there's very little, very, you know, I could tell you literally in five minutes how to, how to, how to sort of uh, do Mahowald's uh, proof of the telescope. Like, it's very easy to deduce that the telescopic homotopy of Y is the same as the K1 local homotopy of Y from the computations I told you. Mark, I have another question. Um, this is Doug again. Hey, have you, thought, have you thought about localizing this spectral sequence by inverting VN in some form of way? So when you invert VN, then that kills all the evil. And then this is completely this story completely turns into um, into the localized Adams Novikov spectral sequence, more or less. And then the cohomology of these good complexes um, it gets computed using it's like the cohomology of the Morava stabilizer algebra and uh, and 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 the May spectral sequence arguments end up being precisely your May spectral sequence arguments when you computed those cohomologies. So VN VN is infiltration zero when you do that. So oh that that is right. But remember remember that um so when you localize the spectral sequence, oops, I somehow lost everything. There we go. So remember, basically, what you end up with, if you end up with something that looks like V plus C, right, converging to pi star X, okay? So when you invert VN, you know, then, uh, then V is VN torsion. And this is VN torsion free. Yes. So you end up with a spectral sequence that, go, that, that starts with VN inverse C, and it converges to, well, the homotopy groups of the uh, nilpotent completion of VN inverse C, which may or may not be related to the telescopic homotopy. May or may not be. Well, it's, okay, you know, it's, it, what it is, is it's, it's the, you know, this is like something like the KN local homotopy, okay? So, you know, may or may not be in if the tell, you know, they, oh, like, this, would be, this would be like, this would be like computing the localized adams novikov spectral sequence, which converges to the KM local. Right, okay. So actually, the, 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 this is sort of, you know, Mohowald's approach to the telescope conjecture for n equals one was basically like, okay, we know what this looks like when we invert V1, but let's not invert V1 and keep track of the torsion, but try to bound the torsion. And, uh, and, and, that's, and that's how he relates the, you know, he uses the unlocalized BO resolution together with clever bounds on torsion to deduce the telescope conjecture. Okay. Any other questions? Oh yeah, other questions.
Okay, well, um, that wraps it up for today's talk and for the series. So thanks again, everyone, for participating, and we'll see you again in the fall. And let's thank let's give, one last time. Let's, th let's thank Dan, too. <laughs> Okay, bye everyone.